So then guys, I've had the new MacBook Air M4 for about a week or so. And one of the questions that I get asked the most with all the sort of reviews and comparisons I've been doing is, what about photo and video editing on the MacBook Air? Can this be done? Is it realistic? And also what kind of results are we gonna get with this? Well, today what I'm going to do is I'm gonna compare a MacBook Air M4 to the likes of a MacBook Air M3, what I have right here. Now, first thing you're gonna notice straight away, this is the 15 inch model. And I am gonna say that, but I just wanted to make sure to tell you guys that these specs in here are almost identical, apart from literally the trip. We've got a 512 gigabyte of storage in here, and we've also got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and then obviously the M3, and that comes with the standard eight core CPU. It's four efficiency cores, four performance core, and also, the 10 core GPU inside of this. Whereas we've got here, it's exactly the same. We've got 512 gigabytes of storage, 16 gigabytes of RAM. We've got the 10 core CPU, and we've also got the 10 core GPU, not the binned eight core version. And I thought that's probably the best thing to keep this test fair. Now, one thing you are gonna say is, well, obviously this is the 15.3 inch model. This is the 13.6 inch model, but because fans, there's none existent here, and the type of cooling that we have in both these MacBooks as a practically identical. I don't think we're going to get really many different results between both of these for the test we're going to do today. I mean, probably the only main thing I would say is that we're driving a few more pixels here on the screen, but for when we're doing like video editing and photo editing, if the photos and videos are all set at a set size anyway, the differences, you know, are really going to be nothing in there whatsoever that we're driving a slightly larger screen here with the M3 inside of it. And just to show you guys here, you know, from initial sort of benefit benchmarks with Geekbench, we can see here in single core sort of scores that we've got right here that obviously the M4 is definitely out in front. And then the same with say graphics kind of scores here with, with Geekbench again, we can see that obviously the M4 definitely outbeats the M3. Now obviously loads of people, including myself out there, have given you the initial benchmarks. But like I said, I wanna drill down what matters for photo editing and also for video editing. And first of all, I'm gonna say one of the things we're gonna test out is gonna be the disk speeds in there. So I've done a black magic disk speed test and let's have a look at the results here for read and write. So like I said before, we've got 512 gigabytes in both these models. So the MacBook Air M3, well, we're getting a read speed of 2,738 megabytes compared to the M4, which is 2,836, so slightly faster, not much in it. And then same with the write speed, it's 1,914 on the M3, and the M4 is 1,956. Again, not much in it, a slight smudge increase in speed what we get with the M4. So I think we can all agree here, it's really minimalist already, just with storage kind of speeds of having the same amount here. It's not really gonna be much in it. So then guys, just quickly, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Boot Dev. Now, like myself, I like to do a bit of coding and I'm also a little bit of a developer too, but I'm not the most confident person in different kinds of software languages out there. But that is where Boot Dev can help me out, can also help you out too. Boot Dev is not like any other training course that I have done in the past. It is really, really great to use. And in fact, what they actually use is say a modern game design to actually help you train you in all the different sort of languages that are available on it. So you can learn about Python, Go, JavaScript, and so many more other languages out there. And because, like I said, it's built on a foundation that's set up like a game, really, I never get bored of actually learning how to code, say, in Python, for example. I think one of the best things I love about Boot Dev is that it actually gives real-life kind of projects out there. Like I said, with that gaming kind of spin behind it, and you can't learn code without doing what you'll do on the job, writing a lot of code and building real projects. You can go to boot.dev right now to try out the courses for absolutely free, but if you want to have a full year membership access, you can actually get 25% off right now by using my own special code, what is Matt Talks Tech. So make sure you use this because you will get a further 25% off, what is really, really awesome. And with that, let's return back to the main video. So with that, let's get started now with some proper apps like Lightroom Classic. That's what I'm gonna start out with. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna import a file what is 34 megabytes 
big, but we're going to import 200 of the exact same file. But these are going to be raw files, and I'm going to time how long it takes to import it is. And here we go, we've got the results right here. So like I said, we've got the same 200 megabyte file. So like I said, we've got the two... So like I said, we've got the same 34 megabyte file, but there's 200 of them being imported in the raw files, and it took the MacBook Air M4 19.6 seconds, whereas the MacBook Air M3, it took 22.36 seconds. So really, there's not much in it whatsoever in kind of importing this in. We're talking like an extra like two and a half seconds, three seconds maximum here. So, you know, there's not much in it there, but exporting these files, so I'm gonna export these same 200 files into a JPEG, as you can see right here, on the maximum kind of quality we can get. Let's see how long it took to do this. And believe it or not, these results are 100% correct. In fact, I ran this three times just to make sure. And that is the MacBook Air took 76 seconds to export these into JPEGs in a high you know, quality, the highest quality you can get. Whereas the MacBook Air M3 took 243 seconds. That is a massive difference there. So straight away with Lightroom Classic, I'm going to be saying this, if you're going to be exporting lots of photos out and things like this, oh yeah, the M4 is definitely worth getting. Getting. Even if the M3 is at a cheaper price of $100, you know, just $100 more, you know, to get yourself the M4 model, you know, if you can get the M3 on Amazon or whatever, I'd be buying the M4 just straight away on this. This is crazy, the performance difference we've just got here in Lightroom for doing some photo exports was absolutely crazy. But moving on though to Photoshop, this is the next test that I've decided to do for you guys. And I've got a script that runs here, what creates a 15.7 gigabyte scratch file using a 20,000 pixel wide image. And what this test does, it resizes it, it rotates it, it does lots of different little bits and pieces. And I'm gonna run it 10 times over. And let's see how long it took to do this 10 times on both of these MacBooks. And this is what it is, it's the DigiLoyge benchmark, and obviously this was the medium setting, 10 iterations, and you can see here, it took the MacBook Air to do it 10 times 142 seconds, whereas with the MacBook Air M3, it took 378 seconds to complete this. So I think it's clear right away for photo editing, so things like Lightroom, you know, your Photoshop, and any other kind of apps out there using photos and imagery, as it were, yeah, I'd be saying lean towards the M4. Definitely get that upgrade. You know, even like I said, if the M3 is like $100 less at the same size screen or, you know, whatever, I would still be leaning towards the M4. It's definitely going to make a big difference here as we've seen in these results right here. But then what about, say, video editing? What kind of differences do we have there? Well, for example, I've opened up Final Cut Pro. And what I've got here is a 10-minute video. And I've played around it here, scrubbing around and things like this. I've changed like the quality from like performance here and then back to original. I really cannot see any slowdown. And by the way, the file I'm fiddling around with here is a Hevec file. So this is a 10-bit Hevec file, something what a lot of us would probably use quite a lot of, you know, just using the internal storage to fiddle around with and even mounting it up with mo many times and scrubbing through. I'm getting no slowdown here, you know, even setting the preview at original. So definitely the MacBook Air can cope with this and even the MacBook Air M3 can do it exactly the same. There's no issues here whatsoever is what I'm going to report back on. But what I would be saying, if you are going to be, say, editing with, say, raw videos, and also you're going to do a lot of logging and things like this, and obviously I'd probably be saying a MacBook Air probably wouldn't be the right model for you. You should be going into MacBook Pro kind of territory with that, because obviously you're going to get a lot of gains there. But, you know, that's a story for another day. But moving on then, what about then, for example, if we got the same one file and we actually made it, say, 25 times speed, so basically make it four times slower than the original speed, how long does it take to render that? So I timed this and here are the results right here. Well, you can see that the MacBook Air M4 here to render this file, to change it, took 213 seconds to go from 100% speed to 25% speed, whereas the MacBook Air M3 took 252 seconds. 
So the MacBook Air is definitely faster, but it's not leaps and bounds faster, not what we saw like with photo editing or things like this. Definitely a good difference there, but not a huge amount. You know, we are talking around about say 40 seconds kind of sort of speed there. If that really matters to you, yeah, it could be on the 10 minute file to make it, you know, to make it to 40 minutes long, for example. So yeah, that does make a bit of a difference there, but you know, overall, I don't think it's gonna be too much in it. And to be honest, what I've also done is I've restored the files back to the 100% speed and then what I've done is I've actually exported them as a Hebec file again at 10 bit 4k and let's have a look to see how long it took to export these files. Well, to be honest, there's not much in it whatsoever. We're talking 12 seconds here. So it took the MacBook Air M4 256 seconds, where it took the MacBook Air M3 268 seconds. There's really nothing in it between both of these MacBooks here for doing export. I'd say import, there is that difference, but export, no. Not really worth it, you know, to go from M3 to M4 or anything like that. And like I said, if you are gonna be doing for video editing, get a good deal on the M3. It might be better to go for the M3 on that factor there. But yeah, that's just one thing to note there. But just in case you want to know, what was if I did the exact same test of an export in say Premiere? Well, I did this and here are the results. And you can see there's really nothing in it again. We're talking about 10 seconds difference here. And obviously it just took about one second or so, or one second less or one second more than it took in Final Cut Pro. Obviously, you know, Premiere Pro is definitely taking advantage of that media core that's inside of the M4 and the M3. So really not much difference here. And even I'm gonna flick over to here to DaVinci Resolve and I did exactly the same thing. Again, look at this results here, 12 seconds apart. This is like identical to Final Cut Pro here. The M4, it's just a little bit faster. So no matter if you decide to use Final Cut Pro, Premiere, or if you're gonna use DaVinci, you're gonna get really the same results here. It's just a preference of what software you prefer to use. But then after this, what was if you use, say, like an actual encoder bit of software, like a bit more open source, I'm going to say. So a bit like Handbrake. So what I've done is I've done a Handbrake export using Apple hardware as the preference here. That same file we just imported into all of those sort of uh, video editing suites, that 10 minute file, I exported it and here are the results right here. We can see that the M4 MacBook Air took 144 seconds, whereas the MacBook Air M3 took 166 seconds. So it was a little bit longer there. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit more of an improvement what we have on the M4, but that's if you are actually going to be doing that. So really here, just to sum up as a bit of a conclusion with the video editing, I would say that if you, know, if you can get yourself a good deal on the M3, like a really good deal, I would actually probably get that. But if you want the best kind of MacBook Air out there, get the M4. And obviously, you know, if you have got that extra sort of $100 or whatever more over an M3, what's on discount to get the M4 model, I'd get the M4 personally because you know you might as well. It's such a good deal now that you can pick them up for 999 US dollars. Obviously, the model that I've got here and we've been testing is the 10 core, so this is the 1099 US dollars, but plus you have to get more storage, that's a bit more again. But you get the idea here. It is worth it going for the M4 unless you can get a really good deal on the M3. But last of all, what you guys probably want to know is what about temperatures and thermals? So, what I decided to do was run that same Lightroom Classic 200 times 34 megabyte raw file export. And here are the temperatures that I got here. You can see that in Celsius for the M4, we got to 45 degrees here Celsius, and that's 113 Fahrenheit here. And then the other one, the MacBook Air M3, well that got to 49 degrees Celsius, and then that's equivalent of 120 degrees Fahrenheit here. So definitely the M4 is cooler, but not by a huge amount. You know, it is definitely a cooler chip than the M3, but I don't think you're gonna be burning your lap. You're not gonna be burning a hole into the table and things like this. But generally speaking, what I'm gonna say here, if you are gonna be buying a MacBook Air, you know, as much as our other YouTubers, including myself, I've done this, that we throttle these and push them as far as we can, Generally, that is not what you'd be using a MacBook Air for. I'm talking about a bit of light sort of photo editing, light kind of video editing, and that's what really I want to be showing today, that it can be done on both of these machines, but obviously if you're gonna be pushing it even further, bigger files more often and things like this, you're gonna be wanting to go into a pro territory where you get a fan built in. 
But what I would be saying with this is as my overall conclusion, if you're looking to doing photo editing and Lightroom and Photoshop and all those apps, oh boy, get yourself an M4, definitely. But if you are gonna be doing video editing and you can get a really good deal on an M3, then you know maybe pick up the M3. But if you have got that extra $100 or so, you're not scrimping and scaping, you know, you've got the money in your hand you know, to get yourself an M4, get that. But obviously if you are just really hanging off here of a shoelace here on money, and you know, you're getting every single quarter out of underneath the couch and things like this, then yeah, then maybe the M3 is still a good option for video editing there. But there we have it then guys, that is the conclusion. What do you think and which model do you think is better for you, M3 or M4? Well, let me know in the comments below. And with that as well guys, it's time to wrap up the video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you wanna hear the latest app on news reviews and comparisons like we've done today, Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye bye.